Welcome to the step-by-step -step introduction to Platformer Pro. In this tutorial, we will create a basic character, some platforms for them to walk on, and add some items for them to collect. Although you can use a prefab to quickly create the character, in this sample, we'll go through everything step-by-step, -step, which will help build your understanding. Let's create some empty game objects. One to hold the character, and a child of that to hold the sprite. We'll set the position to 0, 0, and we'll add a character component to the character game object, and a sprite renderer to the sprite game object. We also need a game object to hold the input for the character. We'll use the standard input. Beyond the sprite, the character requires a couple of other components. It needs a movement for the air and a movement for the ground as a basic starting point. These movement components can be added on the character game object or on a child. In this case, I'm going to use a child to help organize the character. And I'll add an air movement and a ground movement. We can use the menu system to pick the movements we want. In this case, I'm going to use the simplest movement, which is called Digital Basic, and simply has three speeds, not moving at all, moving left and right. Let's set the speed to five. I'm also going to use the basic air movement called Digital Basic. It has a fixed jump height. Let's say we want the character to jump three units high and various detailed settings. For now, let's not worry too much about what these do. But note that you can hover over something to get a tooltip and it will tell you what the value is for. We can also set a tick box to indicate whether the character can double jump. For now, let's say that our character can't double jump. Finally, I'll just rename this object so we don't get confused about what it is. If we hit play now, we'll see the character falls off the screen. That's because there's nothing for the character to stand on. So let's add some platforms. Let's create an empty game object. Add a sprite renderer. And a box collider. The layer of this game object, which we'll rename to platform, is the default layer. If we open the layer settings on the character, we'll see that the geometry layer mask, which is the layers that are solid impassable geometry, is currently set to default. That means the character should be able to stand on this block. Let's hit play. The character's standing, but you may notice he's moved halfway through the block. Let's investigate by having a look at the character's colliders. We can use the buttons here to view various parts of the colliders. The debug co collider button gives the most information. We can see that the colliders are not in line with the character. We can use the reset colliders button to quickly line up our colliders. Let's use basic sprite detection to work out the position of the sprite and align the colliders with that. We'll see now that our colliders better resemble our character. We can also edit the colliders using these handles. For example, let's add another feet, foot collider and move the feet in a little. If we hit play now, 
we'll see that the character stands on the box. If we add a few more platforms, we'll see that the character can move around. However, we're missing a vital component, animations. Let's add a mechanism animator to the character. There's a controller already created for this alien character. And if we have a look at it, we'll see that it simply just has animation states with no connections each one named for a state that's provided by Platformer Pro. We also need to add what's called an animation bridge. Let's pick the 2D bridge. The animation bridge is a bridge between the Platformer Pro events and the animation system, in this case Mechanum. If we hit play now, we'll see that our character animates depending on what they're doing. You may notice the character walks forward to the right but backwards to the left. This is because we haven't told the character how to face another direction. Different types of animation have different ways of facing a direction. For example, a 3D sprite may face a direction by being rotated. Let's add the Unity Sprite Direction Facer. This sprite simply inverses the scale in X of the sprite, which flips the sprite. Let's see it in action. The character now faces in the correct direction. Let's now add an item that the character can collect. There are a few steps to this. First we need to add an item manager to the character game object. This controls what kind of items can be collected, how many can be collected, and also handles the saving and loading of this. For now, we'll add one item to the collection called type coin. The character can hold 99 coins and starts with zero. In order to pick things up, we need to add a collider to the character. This is a standard Unity collider. Let's create an empty game object and call it collect box. We need to add a few components. First, we'll add a box collider. We'll use the scene view to align this with the character. Because the character will move, we need to add a rigid body, or else we'll run into issues with performance. We can use a kinematic rigid body, and we can optionally set this as a collider. Uh, sorry, as a trigger. Finally, we need to add a character reference. This basically says that the collider we're working with knows how to reference a character. The character reference will automatically pick up the parent character object. Now we can collect things, we need something to collect. Let's create an empty game object and call it coin. We'll add a sprite renderer and pick a coin image. We'll add a circle collider which we can use to collide with the coin and we'll mark this as a trigger. And finally we add an item script and we'll call this item coin. There are various types of items within the system. 
for example, stacks of items. We could use this to have a coin which adds five coins. Power-ups, which grant the user powers. Keys for opening doors, or single items which don't have any particular property. In this case, the coin is a single item. Let's move it over to there. The final step is to set the layers. At the moment, the layer is default. This means the character would stand on the coin, which is not what we want. The system comes with a bunch of predefined layers. Choose collectible from the list. You can use any layer, as long as you set up the physics settings to ensure that the character won't stand on the coin. Talking of standing on things, we'll notice that our collect box defined on the character is also in the default layer. This would mean the character could stand on themselves, which is likely to lead to all kinds of errors. Let's go to the top level character game object and change the layer to character. And change all of the children. Now when we hit play, we should be able to collect the coin. Let's give the user some feedback. When they collect the coin, we'll play a particle system, and we'll also show it on the UI. For the particle system, firstly let's change the coin to stackable, so we can have more than one, and add an event responder. The event will come from the coin game object, from the item component we'll listen to the collect item event. We want to do a couple of things. Firstly, we'll disable the sprite renderer. Although that was happening before, now that we've got an event responder, it's up to us to define what happens when the coin gets collected. We disable the sprite so the user can no longer see the coin. We also want to play a particle system, the one I just attached. This is a very simple prefab which shows a small spinner that fades in and out when the particle system is played. We also want to add a UI component. Now let's create a canvas and a couple of empty children. The first, we'll add a sprite renderer to. Sorry, an image component. We won't worry too much about how it looks. We'll also add a text component. This will show how many coins we've collected. Obviously I'm being a little rough and ready with my sprite placement. Finally, to connect the text component to the coin count, we find the stackable item counter UI component. And we will listen to the coin item coming from the character. If we now hit play, We'll see that a small particle effect is played and the coin counter moves up to 1. If we duplicate the coin and the platform, we'll see our item count increases. That's it for this tutorial. In the next, we will look at moving platforms, triggers, and causing damage to the character.